My name's Pete Ritchie. My name's Heather Anderson. And we're just going to say about how we came to the farm in the year 2000. We lived in Edinburgh and we used to come out this way and thought it was a lovely place to, uh, to come out to. And then we thought, why don't we live here? Yeah. But we weren't farmers, so we'd spent 20 years doing social change. We'd been campaigners around social inclusion. We've always tried to change the world. We used to do it around the disability and social inclusion. And then we arrived here and thought, we'll just do the same stuff, but we'll do it around food. So when we first came here, we converted to organic straight away because it just seemed what we needed to do. We put a lot of hedges in and we bought a few cattle and sheep. But we used to just send the cattle and sheep away on a lorry um, when they were ready to go. And then we got a check, a check in the post the next day. It was great. And then we went to Sainsbury's and we did our shopping like everybody else. Yeah. And after a while, we just thought, this, is, this is ridiculous. You know, why don't we try and make a living off the farm by selling food to people? We spend more and more time now doing educational work off the farm. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a job most pretty much full time doing campaigning work around food and Heather's always in demand to go and do talks to people. So we are also getting old and we just need some people to come in who really want to focus on the farming because all we can do at the moment is keep the farm ticking over. You know? So we have some pigs and some sheep and some chickens and some vegetables but, and we've planted hedges and we've got agroforestry, but somebody who comes in now after our, all the work we've done could really build on that and make something quite fantastic here. But it needs someone who's got the whole week to do it, not... Not, not doing it before they go to their yeah. other job yeah. in the morning. So that we're just overstretched with the shop and the food truck and the cafe and the farm and the educational stuff and the campaigning. We can't do all of it. So this is food going down to school. The hardest thing for us is working out what we actually want in all this and how we see the new arrangement working out over what period of time and how we see ourselves in this new arrangement too. Because obviously, if you're just selling a business you know, somewhere else, you can sell it, you get the check, you walk away, you do something else. But this is where we live. And we've lived here for 15 years. We don't really want to have to move house just while we're working out what happens next. So, and also, to be honest, it's very unlikely we're going to find someone who can come in and buy the house and buy the farm straight off because, wow, you know, they're not, they're very unlikely if they're starting off to be able to do that. So we're looking for someone to come in and work alongside us for a couple of years and then maybe buy the farm or maybe take on a tenancy or we don't know exactly what. So we need an arrangement that's going to work for both sides. And then we have to figure out what are we going to be doing while they're on the farm. Are we just going to sit in the house and watch or are we going to help them or yeah. and then if we help them are we going to be in the way and they're going to think oh why don't those old people just leave us alone and yeah. you know so it's quite so it's incredibly personal yeah. very intimate yeah you know it is. i think it is hard work um I think people can farm part-time. I think that's a really good idea that, that you have lots of part-time farmers too. But at Whitmere, there's enough going on really to keep somebody busy the whole time or maybe two people busy the whole time. And there's, if people get organised, there's enough money coming in. But it, it does mean working long hours for some parts of the year, certainly. And it also means going out in the rain you know, and in the cold and dealing with burst pipes when it's really cold and you'd much rather be inside with a cup of coffee and a laptop, you know? So it's those things, somebody has to want to do it. The new cap in Scotland, there's some really interesting stuff in it. You know, the cap, pillar one, is just a nonsense. It's a really daft scheme and it doesn't make any sense. The biggest farmers are the best land, get the most money, and they're the ones who don't need it. So it's a crazy system, the Pillar 1. But Pillar 2, there are some good schemes in it. And there's some schemes for new people coming in where they can get help with capital, with buying stock or buying machinery. And that's great, you know, it's really good um, so that people can get over this hump of getting started. So that's great. And it's really important that that money doesn't all go just to the sons and daughters of existing farmers, you know, because they can get in anyway, you know, they don't need so much help and, and they don't have a complete entitlement 
to that money just because their their mums and dads are farmers. You know, so it's really important to bring in new people who aren't from farming families to bring new ideas and new energy and different ways of seeing the world into farming.